This is multiplayer SimCity for X11 running on Linux. Um, let's see, you can generate a new city, or you can load a city, or use any of the scenarios, but we're going to load the Hate Ashbury District. Um, now, this is just, I'll start out single player. Now, the map view gives you a scrolling rectangle that you can use to look around, and one of the neat features of this is we can open up multiple views, for example, a new editor here. Um, now I've got, I can look at two places in the city at once, or however many. So, like maybe use this guy to keep an eye on the power stations, make sure they don't melt down, and uh, then go look at the, the park, Buena Vista, or the Panhandle, and Masonic Street here, or Haight Street. Now it looks a little, uh, heavily populated here. So we're going to do, looks like Hate Street is a big business district. So what it needs um, is a little renovation. Now the neat thing about this running on Linux is I've optimized it to run really fast. So um, for example, um, let's see. The, uh, okay, here I'll turn the volume up a little bit. We're going to make it go really fast, flat out. Boom! So you see the uh, dates changing so fast that it blurs, but uh, it will, oh, there seem to be a few disasters now. I'm going to raise taxes to get these, um, get rid of all these big buildings. Now, watch how fast it responds. Okay, boom, all, everybody just moved out. So now nobody's living there at all, and there's some fires here. Seem to be, I think it's dropping planes on the city. When you're going so fast, it's best to turn off disasters. Um, let's see, disasters are now off, but it's a little messed up. But anyway, we're doing a, oh, we just ran out of money. So first, as a prevention, let me, uh, funds, no, 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 cheat. This is written in TCLTK, so I can actually type TCL expressions to it. Um, and let's certainly turn off and on the auto budget. So we're up and running again and we'll just lower taxes to let people move back into town and it springs right back up. But we gotta find some happy medium that doesn't have all of the, uh, yeah, here we go. So you get some, once you get a middling tax rate, you start getting bouncing in the, uh, some nice oscillations. So going this fast is really fun. Um, another thing that you could do, say get a new map, the maps have overlays that you can turn on and off, like the rate of growth is an overlay and the population density is an overlay. So we can watch those change as well. I'm going to lower the tax rate and there's all this growth green and then I raise it and it all goes red and orange and everybody moves out. And uh, so pretty, pretty fast at this rate here. This is uh, turbo. Um, let's see. So as many... Uh, views as you want. Um, oh, you can buy a copy of this and then unlock it as a fully functional demo and it will let you unlock it online uh, once it goes on sale, which is not yet, but hopefully soon. Um, now, there is, oh, here's an interesting thing inspired by Ben Schneiderman. Um, we can we can look at the, uh, this is the dynamic zone filter. So we are going to set this to be dynamic. And the zone, now it's going to show all the zones, um, but it's not going to show the ones that don't pass this filter. So this filter is currently all the way open. Now we're going to population density. This is a two-ended slider. This is the segment of the population density from 0 to 81. So everything else will disappear. So I can say, say I'm looking for a home. I want low population density, uh, but I want high rate of growth. And now, these are the places that have low population density and high rate of growth. And then you can just interactively... So each of these filters out some of the places. So you can look at, uh, I don't want high traffic density. Um, I don't want any pollution. I don't want any crime. I want land value to be high. Uh, I'm getting pretty picky. <laughs> so maybe I'll deal with more people. No, uh, lower rate of growth. Uh, too picky about pollution, crime, I'm too picky about land value, that's it. So basically, um, he, uh, Ben Schneiderman demonstrated this is the dynamic home finder, and I realized that 
SimCity has all these layers of information that it can draw on, as fictitious as they are, um, to do that kind of real-time, um, interactive, smooth uh, database query. Uh, this, um, it's just a much higher bandwidth uh, way to query a database than is traditionally used. Um, but anyway, uh, that was the dynamic zone finder. Um, now, let's, this is going a little too fast. I'm going to just make it go whoosh whoosh, and we will go choose another city and demonstrate the multiplayer aspects of it. Um, now, there's only one screen here, so we'll just add another player to the same screen, which results in another set of windows. So, as you can see, each player has a whole set of windows. And uh, the uh, if this player says Dollsville, um, the other player has to agree. So, now he wants Rio de Janeiro. So, because of this, we had undo and redo because there's multiple players. So, previous map, next map. Um, so, that if, see, if one person goes, new city, new city, new city, oh, I like that one. But then the other guy goes, load city, Finnegan. Then the other player goes, no, previous map. So, and then they can talk through here. This is a chat. Please. And then the other player goes, ah. Okay, this is called negotiation. Um, so, he'll say, use this map. This is a voting button. It's double thick. When the first player clicks it down, here I'll put these so you can see both. The first player clicks it down, he's given one vote. You need a unanimous vote in order to get it. You can see that you voted yes, but you need one more vote. This guy sees that one more vote will do it, so he says, use this map, and you go into the game. So, now, the budget has to be agreed on. Continue with these figures. First, we're going to set the auto budget on and make sure disasters is off. So, we will conti continue, continue with these funds. That's one vote. Continue with these funds. There's two votes. Now we continue. If we want to do a disaster, we say monster. Okay, both people get, oh no, do you really want to release a monster? Uh, I guess so. And this guy sees that he can either say, I guess so too, or he can say, no way, and that cancels the vote. So, um, also there's add player, so you could add another player to the game, but that doesn't require um, getting permission. And then there's quit playing, and you have to have a way for everyone to quit, but everybody has to agree, but you can't prevent one person from quitting. So, one person can always say, I quit. So, if one person says, everybody quit, and this guy says, oh, foo on you, he'll just say, keep playing. But you can also uh, agree both to quit or just one person agree to quit. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it gets kind of complicated with multiple players. So um, I've been trying, I found that the different types of dialogues require different types, different ways of handling voting. Like, uh, for example, you can put a nuclear power plant down like that. Now, it's not yet down it's hovering above the ground. And if I put it here, there's this one pending building that we're, we can vote on, but we both have to agree on it. So um, maybe I want a seaport and I'll put it here. But the other guy, he's like, uh, he can hit the go to plan button and I'll bring him to there to see it. And he, oh here, you can use a pie menu here to select different building things. The t most convenient ones are on the top level, like road and bulldozer. But then the zoning ones are up, like residential, commercial, industrial, fire station, police station, and query. Now those you can put down without voting because they're cheap. But build anything, well, there's cheap uh, park. But building any of these things, like an airport, requires a vote. So do you support the plan to build an airport for 10000 Go to plan. So... I can either hit support plan or I can do the same thing in the same place. Just hit the airport. Boom. So, oh, that's, that's the same person. So the other guy has to choose airport and then hit it. So now there's an airport. So we've agreed on something. So, but the way that works 
is that when I hit it, oh, don't have enough money, but let's try a stadium. When I hit a stadium down, this is my dialog here. It's, it has support plan already pressed down as a vote because implicitly I clicked it down. The other guy has to hit the support plan or he can just hit veto. So anyway, you can see the inner locks and, and you know, trying to keep the deadlock situation from happening just the way uh, you have to orchestrate uh, this, these multiplayer buttons. Uh, and the big goal is to keep it asynchronous, never um, take somebody away from what they're doing. Um, you know, you can, um, like if a disaster happens, let's just agree on a disaster, um, what we do is we turn, uh, okay, yeah, we'll have a, no fires are no fun, we will have a monster. Um, so I guess so, I guess so. Now we get this uh, little notice. Um, do, 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 do. Well, anyway, where's the monster? When we both agree on something, it'll happen. But something like a disaster, you don't want to make too easy to happen. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the building tools. I basically demonstrated the multiplayer, so I'm going to quit one of the players. He's going to keep playing, but he is going to quit. So now we just have one set of windows. So the Pi menus let you choose editing tools very easily. As you can see, the Pi menus reflect the layout of the palette. So they serve as a map to the palette, and the palette serves as a map to the Pi menus. You can just click residential and put down residential, click uh, seaport, put down a seaport. Now that there's nobody else here, I don't have to vote. Um, so using the palette is inconvenient because you have to move back and forth and back and forth. So the Pi menus let you pop it up where you are, select road just by moving a small distance, and put a road down, and then pop up, select bulldozer, correct your error, road, continue. So, you know, that would have been a lot of back and forth otherwise. So, really, you could just get rid of this panel. Oh, I forgot to show one neat little multiplayer feature is the chalk. So you can draw, and the other player can draw, and then you can erase. So it's just for communicating, as is the chat window. So now, once you get used to these, um, they're very gestural. You learn them, and they're arranged to be easy to remember. Um, so you can do the submenu, go up, and then go up again to get commercial. And then you remember right is road, and down. So you can do that really quick. Boom, bulldozer. Boom, road. Boom, uh, wire. Uh, boom, boom, residential. Boom, boom, industrial. Boom, boom, fire station. So, boom, boom. Uh, what's this? Something I can't afford. Um, so, basically, um, this is a nice little shortcut, and it saves a lot of time. Um, so, the... Uh, Oh, the dynamic filter also works for here, in case we want to hide it, anything. So, at any rate. Um, and if you haven't um, bought a license, uh, the demo will uh, melt after a while. And that's actually going to run a cellular automata in the cell memory instead of um, the SimCity algorithm. So, here we go. Now it'll... Yeah, and the cool thing is that the the drawing tool still works. So you could take the um, bulldozer and, and just draw around, or you could try to build. A, um, oh, let's see. We'll, we'll try to put uh, police stations down. Whoop, boom. Oh, uh, sim funds nine 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 nine. I ran out of money. So yeah. So we will. Try to look for a nice 
grassy place and build a police station. And it just instantly melts. So, that just did. And there's also, um, there's this other one. This is Eco. This is Anil plus Brian's brain plus life. And uh, that's, it's just a really interesting way to display cellular automata as SimCity tiles. So, what the heck.